Hi, my name is Sonia Klaus and I was at Wimbledon College of Art and then spent the first few years of my life working in theatre. And from there, I progressed on to working in film and television and commercials and pop promos. Eventually, just decided to do films and television. I didn't just jump straight into being a production designer because I felt it was really important to learn skills and to have knowledge. And I wanted that. And it has helped me certainly in my job. I think my father probably was the first person to recognize the fact or to possibly suggest the fact that I might eventually end up in film because he gave me a book when I was much younger and it was called The Legends of Hollywood or Hollywood and its Legends. And he wrote a very good uh, piece in front of it. And because of that, I think uh, maybe he realized that that's where I was going. And he wrote to Sonia with best wishes and, and she may become one of the great legends who made Hollywood what it is and thus add to its legend. I can remember one particular film um, because it was one of the biggest films I'd worked on and it was when I worked on Gladiator. The only reason I remember this is because there was a film that recently came out called Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I was watching it and there's a rather lovely scene where the actress goes into this, um, she goes to see this show that's being screened, one of her films. And she's sitting there and she's looking around to see what people's reactions are. And they're laughing because it is, was a comedy. And she's delighted that they're laughing because she's, they don't realize they're sitting in with the person that's on the screen, but she's enjoying watching them to see what they think of her. I remembered when I went to see Gladiator, it had come out and so I go and see it and I spent most of the time looking when, when bits came on that, that, that I knew I'd had a lot to do with. I was quite interested to see what they were thinking, these people. So I spent the whole time looking at people sitting in the cinema and I still do that now when I watch something, I still look to see I'm still fascinated by that. I much prefer doing jobs where I get to build. Um, I, 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 it gets a little bit mundane when you go on a show and it's just all location work because really as a designer, yeah, you choose the locations, um, you know, with, with, you know, you sort of suggest them and to the director and people. Um, and it's okay, you know, you can go in and some you can do quite a bit to if you need to, you know, but, uh, you know, going in and sticking in a sofa and a carpet and painting the wall pink isn't exactly a challenge for me. And I prefer, I like doing period a lot. Like when I did Taboo, I love doing Taboo because George in England was just so wonderful and everything about it. And I love Thomas Rowlands and the artists that are used for reference and um, I really enjoyed it. But likewise, when I was on, when I was set decorating and I got to do Prometheus, because I love science fiction, you know, that was um, amazing. I loved that because everything has to be invented because mm. there is no reference book. There's obviously people's concepts, but it's all. And I think the bit that I don't like, I really, I don't like the politics. I think um, there is a misconception. I think a lot of people think that a production designer sits with a pencil and does pretty drawings all day long. Um, that isn't actually the job. Uh, the designing part, I can only speak for myself, is actually quite a small part. It's the quickest part. That's the part, the easy part, getting that done. And then the boring part is all the budgeting and all the other things and the crewing and all of those things and then sorting out, you know, what's production. It's always dealing with production, what's going on there. It's always something. I sometimes wish, you know, sometimes I think, oh, I'd love to go back to the board and just sit and be in my own world and do a drawing and, you know, that's all I've got to do and do that and it's great and, you know, be creative. Uh, and I do miss that sometimes. I miss it. And um, I remember what it was like and model making. I loved model making, you know, sitting doing that. I loved getting lost in the thing and the challenge of fitting pieces together and 
then seeing something come, you know, and suddenly it was a building, you know, whatever it was. And I think I, I, I do, it in, I miss that. Um, you need to remain, uh, always remain very calm. No point shouting back, not gonna get you anywhere. And you have to let them calm down because some people can get quite angry. You know, if, if they've been working on something and you make a change, they, 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 they take possession of it so, so much that they can't accept any change because they don't understand what's wrong with what they've done. And it's not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just that it might not meet the brief. It's gone outside of the brief. And you always have to go back to the brief, go back to the brand, go back to the brief and explain that to them and just say, this is the brief, this is the brand. It's just going away from that and we need to try and get it back. And it's every, you know, it's different in every situation. It's not always that simple. Sometimes it can go on for days. Sometimes it can go on for an hour. Sometimes it can get resolved at that moment. It's quite a difficult role being a production designer because you must never point the finger he said, she said, your fault. It's, it's not because at the end of the day, if a mistake is made, actually it's on you because you are paid the most and you're the head of department. That's what your job is. You know, yeah. your job is to support and your job is to help and your job is to nurture and your job is to be kind, you know, and listen. And you know, who knows if a second wave is going to come and what that's going to do. But I think once people work out, like on Jurassic World, there's a lot of people on that and they're fine and they're working and they've got all their COVID stuff happening. You know, and I think once people work out how to cope with it, because this isn't going to go away in five minutes and the world can't stop because of COVID, we have to work out how to survive, which is what people are doing, aren't they? We can't, what we, we can't, and not everything's going to stop. And next year, what are people going to do? Because if we have it again, they're going to want to watch telly, aren't they? They're going to want to watch something on their screen. They're going to watch reruns. They're going to want new stuff. You know, we are in the entertainment business. That's what we do, don't we? People to join the British Film Designers Guild because that will obviously help you. And we do have a forum that you can use to promote yourself. And that has given people a lot of work because they get to meet other people who are also a member of that guild. And so I would say it's quite an important thing to do. I think a lot of people setting out at the beginning, they do feel a bit alone and a bit lost. And because you, you've had that camaraderie when you've been at university, you've all been together in a group and you've had stu tu tutors to give you projects to do. And then all of a sudden, all by yourself and you've got to come up with your own projects to do and it can be a bit daunting for some for some people they don't struggle and they they off they go and they're up and away and other people like me i was a little bit slow to start and uh, i eventually got there for me the graduates and the people that we have as affiliates who joined the guild that's the future because i was one of those ones and i i tr those people in 10 years are going to be me aren't they in 10 years you're going to be 10 years 15 years whatever it is or maybe less you're going to be doing what i do so it's really important to nurture those people and and you have to take that plunge and so for anybody who is you know thinking that you know, you're not gonna get hired because you're a graduate. Well, we hire graduates and some, you gotta start somewhere. So if somebody doesn't give you a break, how the hell are you supposed to ever get any experience? It's, it's, a, it's a, there's always this, people are always worried about this, you know, chicken and egg situation. I think confidence is a, is a really important thing to have in the art department. And I think sometimes the art department we get sort of um, slightly pushed into a, shoved into a corner by production because they go, oh, those arty types, you know, and they kind of, in a way, you still get slightly treated that you, you're arty farty. So 
you're, you're all right. You don't, oh, you don't need to be paid that much. You know, you don't need to, and I, and I think um, there's a skill that needs to be taught, which is missing for people to have confidence to stand up to when they go in and do their, if they want to go and do their deal or whatever it is they need, that they have the confidence to stand up to a producer not to be rude i don't mean to shout and be rude i mean to have that confidence and conviction in themselves that they have value and that they believe on in their value i don't know i think it's a really important thing and i think a lot of people get left beside the wayside who are really super talented because they just haven't got the confidence you know and, and you see them when they're in their 40s and 50s and you think why aren't you a production designer now you're so amazing but they're and some of them are happy where they are. They, they just want to stay where they are. They don't want to become the, the chief and in charge. But in a way, they have the skill and the ability to, but they just don't have that confidence. I often look at portfolios and sometimes they're just all um, drawings that have come out of computers. And also mm -hmm. a lot of them are very wrong. They're really bad because people just follow a program. They go oh, and they write on their CV. Oh, I can draw in Vectorworks. Oh, I can yeah. use Rhino. I can use Maya. I can use Adobe or whatever they sketch up. So a lot of the time, the people who know how to do the, they have to correct them all the time. They do make the mistake. And one mistake they do make is they send you their CV and it says, I'm a production designer. So, if you're a production designer, why are you coming to see a production designer for the running job? Or and never write at the bottom, oh, I can do, I did this. I was a prop maker, I was a prop buyer, I was an art director, I'm also a driver, I also speak French, I also do Adobe, I also do SketchUp, I'm also a designer, I'm also a prop man. Well, what are you really then? You know, and that is a mistake that a lot of graduates make because they, they feel they need to put like all that stuff on there because that's going to help them to get a job. What it actually does is it makes the person who's looking at it going, because oh. you're almost putting it back on our ass to say that we have to make a decision about what we think you're good at. And you've given us a choice of 10 things. You need to learn to draw with one of these. I think that's a very important thing for people. You can teach yourself to do a computer program, like you can teach yourself to use your mobile phone. You can teach yourself how to use your laptop. I don't have anyone with me that can't draw with a pencil. Everyone that's working for me in the art department, they can all model make. The reason they're important is because many people who are coming into the film industry have absolutely no visual sense whatsoever. And when you have something that's three-dimensional and they can actually look through a window or look down at it, they can interact with it and understand it. You know, people go, oh, I can do that in a SketchUp for you model so you can look at it in 3D. Well, the thing is, that's great, but you have to download SketchUp and have it in your laptop because you can't open the program. You can look at slices or you can look at if someone does a little fly through for you and, you know, which is what we do sometimes. We do like little fly throughs for people, for directors. Yeah. And you can do those, but <clears throat> you can't open the main thing unless you've got the program in your laptop well no yeah. director's gonna have they're not gonna have that the producer's right. not gonna have that and so we get the models out and lighting cameramen they all go and, the, and they all look at models and in fact yeah. the job i'm on at the moment um we did all these drawings loads of drawings and fly throughs and blah, blah, blah and it ended up with the directors they said oh um do, do you do you and these are younger people like in their 30s tw mm. late 20s 30s these are not people my age and they go oh do, do you oh i can't i don't understand where the and i go oh don't worry i'll send you some photographs of the model and even on their laptop when they can look at photographs of the model it's really strange i think it's because it's because it's actually physically physical You kind of get used to it when you're a freelancer. You have to expect you're not going to finish a job on Friday and start on a Monday. You have to expect you might have a gap of six weeks. And, and if it's not for you, you know, I say to people that come to me, how do you, how do, you do it? And I was like, because I'm, I'm a freelancer. I've, I've always been it and I can cope with it. I'm, I'm, I can cope with it. I can survive. I will survive. But some people need 
that you know they want it they need to be paye they need to be in a structured situation and i can always tell those because there's the ones that get anxious first you know if they if they suddenly think they might not work for a week they're like <laughs> and you're like jesus you've got to be able to get through five days without earning some money you you, you you know, you need to think about it, you know, and that again comes back to confidence, you know, the confidence in thinking, you know, about that and being confident about yourself, that you're not going to be left on the shelf and that you are going to get another job. I think the clue is in the word that I use the word people is that they have to interact with other people. And that is so important you know, because of the environment that we're in. And you want to feel there's a solidarity amongst you and you're protected. And also you want to come in and be with those other people and want to come in. You want to wake up in the morning and think, I'm so excited about going back to work today. Not, oh, don't you know, if it's not right for you and it's not making you happy and it's not stimulating you and it's not giving you, we're only on this planet once. This is, you get one go and you don't want to waste it. I mean, I think it's really important in an arts department that you feel when you come in and there's someone like me there and I'm quite a strong personality. If you're not happy, you need to leave or change, 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 but you must be happy. What did I say to myself? I did not have a clue that I would end up where I am now. I didn't really have any direction. There was nobody in my family in the film industry. And it just, I fell into it literally at the goodwill of other people. And that's what happens when you're looking for a job and working is it is a lot of who you bump into or it's not necessarily, it's not like a normal job application where you see an, a, an advert for a job in the paper or something like that, or it's on a, some sort of website that you can go on to. It sort of doesn't really work like that. 